Yeah. And the people who join and then they don't, they don't ever come or they don't even look to, to see, they don't access our site after about three to six months or more. Mm -hmm. They want to come back on? Sure. <laughs> You're not going to show up or. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Did you change your speaker? Uh, I, is it working on? It's working. Yeah. Wow. So, when did you start working on your new shop? We are meeting next week. They uh, they're in the process of uh, deconstruction right now because it used to be a medical office. Uh, so there's lots of examining rooms. There's lots of walls that need to come down. So it's it's going to be a little bit of a process. Yeah, little private meeting rooms where people can use Wi-Fi or something over there. <laughs> yeah, they're well. They decided to take everything out, and then the landlord wants to put everything back in so we're going to actually make an office and we'll walk it again and see what we can do but yeah it would be nice to have a meeting room I had hadn't really thought about that but maybe yeah, people keep asking me if we're going to do that so we'll look at it <laughs> yeah Oh, awesome. okay. oh, it. I'm sorry, you did cut out. <laughs> no, is it? Uh, no, okay. is it got much snow there, or, or is it just... Yeah, we had a little snow a couple of days ago. There was actually snow on the ground, and it's um, uh, been a little. It's been cold, but mostly rain. Just lots of lots and lots of rain. <laughs> That's what you yeah. get for going to Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yes. This is Tuesday the 18th at night. It's at 17 Do you see what's your last name? Carlos? Stephen, I got it. Me, Roy. Oh, Caesar. How are you, Roy? Have pen? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Work for a funeral. Funeral home. No. <laughs> Where do you work for? Joey and Smith. Funeral home. Uh, well, Caldwell? No, no, it's actually in Tulare. Uh, we have three different locations. Oh, yeah. New Glen, oh okay. I did work for Miller. Oh, oh no. Okay. And we did an open house. Oh, I can't remember the name of, uh, for the chamber over on Caldwell at a funeral. Oh, so it's one of the No. The smaller ones. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Um, um, Harley Malcolm. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's been a year or two yeah. or something like that. But yeah. We're in Fresno. It's right off the 99 on Fresno Street. Oh, yeah. Going yeah. Kind of downtown. I, yeah. Yeah. Well, I also work right in Porterville and I have a little trade. Oh, wow. Oh, really? I live in Fresno. My wife used to be a nurse at Children's. So when we got married, we, I moved up there. I do it. I commute at office, Patron, oh, okay. downtown. Okay. I drive there every morning. Do you? Yeah. 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 I do the opposite. I drive here and go back. Yes. Yes. I'm going to yeah. Hey, we got a we got a chicken. No, chicken. Do you have extra balance? Uh, they got one up here. Okay. Um, we, we count all the filler words, odds, ums, and, and whoever kind of wins or essentially loses and has the most gets the chicken. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we haven't had one in this closet. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I would like for you to join me in the flat salute. Can we stand? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I also forgot Mimi. Is with us via. <laughs> I'd like to invite our president, Mr. Dennis Ham. Oh, my eyes. <laughs> well, welcome everybody for the, to the first meeting of 2020 here at Downtown Toastmasters. Wow, looks like everybody, or a lot of people, have different New Year's resolutions. <laughs> we have quite a few people here. So what we'll do before we get too far along so that we at least know each other's names, go, we'll go around the room and we'll say our, our name and internally uh, how long have been Toastmasters or how long we've been at Toastmasters and maybe what your occupation is and then we'll just move around. Just really short so we just get to know everybody. And I'm going to slide over to the camera so I can rotate it so maybe you can see where everybody is too. So I'm going to move over here. Robin, go first and go slow down that side. My name is Robin Kerna. I've been here Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm Mary Alice Nichols. Um, I moved to the Valley a little over a year ago, and I actually did to houses in San Francisco. So, you know it somewhat well, and my job's really involved in the Bay Area. Um, and I am the communications manager at Nichols Farms. 
Okay, I'm Barbara Chaletta, and I think we've just messed maybe four years, five years. It's been a while anyway, <laughs> and I'm a financial coach. Denise <laughs> Martins, and Barbara invited me. So, um, I was Prime America Financial Services. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Um, I've been here in two years. All the invited me here, and I love it. And I have not been really good in attending the last two years, so I'm trying to come back. <laughs> I've been here a year, thanks to Olga. I work with the Hispanic Chamber to learn through Hispanic Chamber. My name is Olga Duran, and I've been with Toastmasters for two and a half years, and I love it. I am Sergeant at Arms. Hello, my name is Susanna Lasovic. I have been with Toastmasters in the Chiefs for several years, and I don't know how long I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also the club PR. Hello, my name is Sergio Villasenor. This is my second uh, meeting as a guest. I work for a new firm uh, in downtown Colchico. My name is Clay Monsad. Uh, this is my first meeting for Toastmasters. And what I do is I, I'm an event specialist with the Advantage Sales and Marketing for running the products for various Walmart stores by selling on the after. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm Roy Dressel. I have been a Toastmaster coming on four years. I was in the Tuesday night club for about three years, and then it worked out a little better for me, and so I've been in this club, I think, since September. Okay. My name is Peter Tiran. Um, I'm new here. My first, th my first time. Uh, Ken invited me, and I'm a mortician, a licensed funeral director, and then I'm done. All right, great. Let me turn this back around and run around back to the front. Yeah, I know. I... Okay, I do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, my name is Evis. Uh, I work here in town. And I'll buy a seat. Okay, I jump. All right, great. <coughs> Welcome, everybody. Yep. My name is Dennis Ham. I'm currently the president of this club. Professors, longer than most of you have been born. <laughs> I joined Toastmasters first joined '72. I haven't been a member all that time, but I think, looking back, I think I've been in Toastmasters for about 35, almost 40 years. Just because I've been in Toastmasters a long time doesn't mean I'm a great speaker. It means that I coming back. So that's why I'm here. All right, so we'll go ahead and I think hopefully everybody or almost everybody has a copy of our agenda for today. The agenda, we, we try to use a timed agenda to stay on time. And we're probably running a little bit behind schedule at the moment, but we'll catch up. We try to stay on time because we want everybody to be able to know when they come to the meeting, when we start, and then when we, when they can leave or when we should be done so they should get back to work. So I know that most of you have. I'm retired, so it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> it matters to a lot of you, so we try to stay as close to being on schedule as possible. We have basically three parts of our Toastmaster program. The first part of the meeting is, well, the first third of the meeting is roughly the speaking part of the program where we have people give prepared speeches. After that, we have a se session where everybody else gets to participate. It's an impromptu speaking session where we call, it we call it table topics. And people can learn how to speak off the cuff because you don't know what the topic is, but you're asked to speak on an impromptu basis for at least one minute and up to two minutes in length. And after that, we have a, we evaluate speakers who spoke at the first part of the meeting so that they have some feedback and know how well they did and how they can improve. So that's basically what you'll see today in our Toastmasters meeting. Right now our Toastmaster is late. He told me that he was going to be late, so we'll kind of cover for him until he gets here. He works for the, yeah, I think the, yeah, that is, I'm not sure it's at Dennis, but he works for one of the hospitals locally. And oh, yeah. he, is, he is pretty high up in their food chain and he, had, he was called to go to a meeting. So that's why he's not here at the moment. 
but he did let me know that he was going to be a little bit late. So I will cover for him right now. Now I wrote down the next part I have is the inspirational thought and word of the day. And I wrote down the guest, but I don't recall who the guest was, and I'm not sure if the guest has come back. Yeah, I have okay. Paper. Well, I, I have an inspirational thought, but do you have a word of the day? Well, we have a word up here that we could probably use, so let's do that. So Barbara, why don't you go ahead and explain a little bit about what word of the day is all about, and then okay. I'm going to turn the camera up so we can see it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be Let me stand here. Sure. Okay. That's okay. We're good. Um, so word of the day is to increase our vocabulary uh, as we go on in life. We kind of tend to use the same words all the time. So word of the day is to just increase our vocabulary. And the inspirational thought is to keep our mental growing happening. So we like to do that. So today's perfect, spontaneous, <laughs> spontaneous, coming or resulting from a natural impulse or tendency without effort or premeditation, natural and unconstrained, unplanned and spontaneous, first of all, you know, spontaneous, we all know it's spontaneous, right? Just like what I'm doing right now. Um, but use the word of the day in when you're talking and uh, we make note of that and, and it's the way to, for you to get used to uh, keeping your vocabulary up with even today's talks, okay? And my inspirational, thank you, is do not take life too seriously. You will never get out of <laughs> And so life is too short to be serious all the time. So if you can't laugh at yourself, call me, I'll laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Barbara. <laughs> Actually, we've got to the part where you can start, Dave. Our, this is our Toastmaster, Dave Garrett, and he told me that he was going to be a little late. And, well, actually, come on up here. I got a couple more things to say before I surround. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, yeah. Well, actually, I can do it under educational moment, which is right now. Well, okay, let's do this. Here. Let's let me do the educational moment, and then I'll. Um, oh, you want to do? It? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, go ahead. Well, in that case, if you're going to do it, let me have Toastmaster. Let, let me okay. This is our Toastmaster, and Toastmaster's job is to basically be the MC for the day, mm -hmm. and from this point forward, he introduces the various participants. And so please help me welcome Dave Garrett. <laughs> Appreciate everybody getting started. Don't touch the microphone because it's so I see that doesn't balance very well. It doesn't balance very well. Anyway, welcome. Welcome, honored guests. So, first here, we'll have an educational moment by Robin Byrne. Welcome to her. I'm called Vice President of Education, but this is a relatively new position for me as far as especially my understanding, although we will be going to some training in about uh, two weeks, and so I'll have a lot more knowledge, but I wanted to just tell you, especially since we have so many visitors, a little bit about this. My job is to promote continuing education for all members and the future and success of the club and their educational go goals with a high degree of satisfaction, proficiency, and confidence here to support that. And as of July 1 of this year, our entire group will be going to something called Pathways, which any new member goes on Pathways right now, and that is a computerized system where you go in and register for what area of speaking you would like to be a part of. Once you do register as a Toastmaster, you'll also be getting a magazine called Toastmaster. And in this, it gives you some, and some websites and things to go on to, to do some extended learning. If you choose to be an officer, and I'm not trying to suck in right now, on be an officer, you do have a couple of trainings a year that are very beneficial. They're about a half a day. Some of our team members are going to Santa Barbara this weekend on Sunday, I believe, for some training. 
And what, what we're able to do is once you're on Pathways, we can help you manage what you're doing a little bit and support you and help you and then give you a heads up when you're going to be almost ready to receive a award or, or maybe encourage you to get moving a little faster so that you can get through your steps. Um, this is what our speaker today will be using, and this is currently what I use, is a hard copy book, and this is what Toastmasters have used in the past. And now that, you know, it's 2020, I figure we all need to be on, on, uh, on deck with the technology. Okay. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Robin. We will now introduce our general evaluator for the meeting, Mr. Lord Russell. Well, as Dennis spoke a little earlier, we not only learn how to do speeches, but then the other part, the important part of the Toastmasters is the evaluation. And so I'm the general evaluator today, and I have a team that, that that's meaning go smoothly and to kind of judge who we're, what we're doing. Now, we have a, I don't have a note on who that is. Do we have a, not yet. Not yet. So I, somebody will, I do the vote okay. Dave, well, Dave, you want to explain what the vote counter does? The vote counter counts the votes. Hey, Everybody right. gets to take a vote. After a speech, an evaluation, or a table topic, and you'll write who your favorite person was. As we pass it around, it's a confidential ballot. And at the end, we have a we have a drawing. A drawing. We we, we award the winner. Fancy ribbon so they can take home. Thank you. We have a timer to time today, and that timer is Robin Turner. Robin, you want to explain what the timer's role is? Yes. Now this device that I'm bringing is bad. I've known it was. I didn't want to talk about it. Okay. The speaker today, her speech is, will be timed at five to seven minutes. When she hits the five mark, a yellow light will appear to tell her she's fine. She has two more minutes. Oh, green, green, thank you. And then in another minute, the yellow light will appear to tell her she has one more minute. When the red light appears, she has, I believe it's 15 seconds to wrap it up. We will also be doing something called table topics. and That's one to two minutes. And at the one minute, it will be a yellow light, green, green light again, sorry. <laughs> I think 30 seconds after that, right. um, yeah. green, yellow. yellow, I'm so sorry. I don't have my little cheat sheet. And then when the red light comes in. And that will be a, a time for sure. Thank you, Robin. You're welcome. And the third member of the evaluation team is the ever popular awe counter for Marion. Filled today by Susanna Lasseter. That's right. All right, for all of your names down here, if you're wondering why, I want to know your name. And next to your name, I'm going to put down how many ums or ahs or fewer words like okay or you know, things like that. And I'll also look for cool phrases. And hopefully, some of you will use the word of the day, which is. I will also put it on the sheet of paper. So, good luck, then. Deal. Thank you, Susanna. Very spontaneous. Of you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's it. We'll move on to the next speaker. I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Olga Duran. She will be speaking the tale of love, the storytelling project. My speech is the first speech of this storytelling book, so it was very interesting for me. Um, I realized that it took me a long time to come up with a, a, a tale, a folk story. 
Once upon a time, there was two sisters that lived in a small town by the mountains. The mountains were beautiful year-round. In the wintertime, they were covered with snow, and in the summertime, they were covered in wildflowers. Just beautiful, with the most beautiful orange poppies that you can think of. The town had everything that the people in that could live there comfortably, and they were very happy. Lucy, she was eight years old. She was the cutest thing you could imagine. She had this infectious smile, long black hair, and was the sweetest, biggest heart you could imagine. Her sister, she was the oldest, and she was 14 years old. Her sister had short, straight brown hair. She was not always the nicest sister that you can imagine. She was always really moody. And as they were different, their parents were different. Their parents, their father, who was tall, with broad shoulders, really handsome man. He had dark hair and just the best father that you could ask for. And on the other hand, the mother, she was short, a little overweight, and very bossy. She wanted to have everybody and everything in control. As the girls um, grew up, their father and mother worked out in the fields. And so the oldest, which was Ursula, she was in charge of making sure that Lucy and herself got to school. They had to walk every morning, it was, whether it was cold, foggy. And she had to make sure that Lucy and her got to school on time and that they got home safe too. Once they got home, they had chores to do. Back in the day, you had chores, whether you liked it or not. Lucy didn't mind it. She loved to do chores. She would cook. I mean, she wouldn't cook. She would sweep. She would wash. She would take out the trash. And not only that, Ursula, that didn't like to do chores, she would bribe little Lucy. And Lucy, with her kind heart, would say, sure, sure, sister, I will do your part of your chores. So Ursula would grab her books, go into her room, and read and do homework. That was what Ursula loved to do. So Lucy was in charge with all the chores, and the only one thing that she could not do was cook. The parents were afraid that one day they'd come home and there would be no home. It would be burned down. So she got to do everything else but cook. As the girls got older, uh, Ursula was a senior in high school and she wanted to be a lawyer so bad. And she had the grades. She was amazing at schoolwork. And Ursula knew it was gonna be a long shot that her parents would let her go to school. So she told her teacher about her dilemma. She wanted to go to college. And so her teacher saw the potential and her teacher said, you know what? I'll go talk to your parents. I'll go and see what I can do for you. So the teacher scheduled an appointment with the parents and the parents were, I wonder why she wants to come. We never had a teacher come and talk to us. I wonder if Ursula is in trouble. You know? And um, so the teacher went over, they talked, they had a long conversation, and it was easy. The parents said, no, she is not going to call. <clears throat> a girl doesn't need an education to be a good housewife and a good mother. And that's what Ursula is going to do. So the day, day came that she graduated. She was happy, but she was sad at the same time. And so Ursula ended up going to work with her parents in the fields. And every day it was a struggle. She was upset. 
because she couldn't go to college. And what happened was one thing that Ursula did not want to do, and that's what she did. She got married and started a family. After this happened, they lost their father. Their father died suddenly. So Lucy and her mom were left by themselves. And as time went on financially, it was getting hard. So Lucy decided, well, if I don't need an education, if I'm not going to be able to go to school or college, I'm going to drop out. She was a sophomore in high school, and she went to work with her mother. So she started helping out that little that Lucy knew that she would meet the man of her dreams out in the fields. Mm -hmm. So Lucy got married. They started a family. The sisters started to kind of drift apart a little bit. Um, one was too busy making a lot of money. One was trying to survive. But at the end, what happened was that Lucy taught Ursula a big lesson that in life, it doesn't matter what you do, as long as you have your family. And she told Ursula, doesn't matter. We have each other and we love each other. Thank you. Now we're going to do something um, for table topics. Oh, actually, you're right. You're correct. Since I know we have one, just one speaker. If you can take a moment, write down your thoughts, things you like, things that you, you suggest to Olga that she could improve, some ways that she can challenge herself. We get feedback every time we speak at Coastmasters through either anonymous feedback or through direct feedback to help us improve. So I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, then it's on. That's in New York. That's a New York. Yeah. 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 Okay, about 30 more seconds. Oh, yeah, the envelope. The envelope, please. We will now begin the fun time of Toastmasters at Table Topics. And to introduce Table Topics, I would like to introduce the Table Topic Master, Mr. Dennis Ham. Right. This is the impromptu or spontaneous part of the meeting. Please try to use the word today, spontaneous. I'm going to try to make it easy for everybody. Normally what we do is we're given a topic, and sometimes the topics are related, and sometimes we use a similar topic, but the task that you have, if I call upon you or if you volunteer, is to speak for at least one minute. And the timer has a timing device, so when the green light shows up, you have the minimum requirements. Try to, the goal is at least one minute. And you can speak up to two minutes, and if you go a little bit over, that's okay, but you only have like about 15 seconds little overtime. But I'm going to give a single topic today. It's going to be a pretty broad topic. So right now it's the first of the year and people have made lots of resolutions. And so the year is now 2020. But in another couple of weeks, it's also going to be Chinese New Year's and it is the year of the rat. So that's Batui up here. <laughs> so the idea to is going to be New Year's resolution, what I plan to do this year, what I have done in previous years, was it successful or not, general topic. Beginning of the year, how do you do it, or how did you do it, was it successful or not, would you do it differently? Okay, really general. So you can come up with anything you want, but please be a little bit spontaneous and your topic. And I will see if anybody is willing to volunteer first. And if not, I will start calling on people. So, Robin, you want to do it for them? You can try time yourself to do this at the yeah. start. Also, please come up here to the lecture so that I don't have to keep turning the camera and maybe <laughs> things.
New Year's resolution. Yeah. I've learned that they are not the greatest things to have because most of us don't keep them. And my husband and I go to the gym every day. And by the second week, the population of the parking lot is back to normal. So they don't last too long. I decided about eight years ago to take charge of my health instead of going on diet. Thinking I was already a healthy person and that I'm eating really healthy, I learned there were a lot of things I could do different to maintain it, actually to improve my health. Because I had been, of all my friends, I had been the healthiest eater, but my health was diminished and I was trying to figure out what was wrong. And when I met some people that were heavily conscious and eating, I learned that. When you take care of yourself nutritionally, not only do you lose excess weight if you have it, but your health also improves. Because someone had asked me about um, two years ago, what would I have done if, if I hadn't done that? And I said, well, it's kind of scary to think about it. I think I'm almost 64, and I think I would probably be in a wheelchair right now because I had trouble walking. I had a lot of physical pain. I had a lot of stress because of all that. And I wanted to, I wanted to be healthy as a grandma. And now at almost four, like I said, I have five grandchildren, of which two I was in charge of for the last two weeks. So I'm very thankful that I can run around and keep them happy. Thank you. You're still young. <laughs> All right, who else would like to try on be spontaneous and talk about something about this beginning of the year or new year resolutions? What worked for you, what didn't work? So pretty wide open. So we should be able to come up with something for at least one thing. Yes, just let me see. I think I'm gonna pick on Susanna next and we'll go up with a few more members and then we'll see if the thought of our guests would like to try. Is that Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I like to say that Carla Lane, but I would like to say when I was around 14 years old, I read a book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And on the first chapter, it said, Never criticize, condemn, or complain. What a good New Year's resolution. So the following New Year's, I wrote it down. I'm not going to criticize, condemn, or complain. Didn't last a day. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, man, get this stuff. Not going to work. So it didn't work. So the following year, new resolution. Don't criticize, condemn, and complain. I'll try again. No, didn't last a day either. So after about 15 years, I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> but I still don't want to criticize, condemn, or complain. So anyone has any tips on that, mention one of your speeches this year. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, what you should have done, which would work since you were successful in doing all those three, rephrase it to the opposite, and you will have succeeded. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Not that it's a good thing, but it is. At least you'll be successful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next person who would like to be spontaneous. Try. Let me see. Let's see. I don't know. She she hasn't spoken for quite some time. I'm trying not to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you are hiding. <laughs> This is going to be so spontaneous. Oh Only because I don't have permission. I, I give up. But what I did is I made a goal this year. Like, go like, what I did is write 70 women to photograph this year, more grandmas to photograph this year, more grandmas. So, so I just like give up on your New Year's resolutions because for me, it doesn't work. Like Susanna here, like no, it doesn't no. work, but just go, like go that it's attainable. Like 
every month, like I get to photograph five women, ten women, and me. I'll be there. So I made the um, you know, goal. So I don't know for some reason, like New Year's resolutions is for like high schoolers. That's, that's just me. That's just me. But yeah, so goal like. See someone back there. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to try. Did you ask? Did you ask me if I wanted to try? I couldn't hear the speaker. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, fellow Toastmasters, I didn't get a chance to myself though my name is Mimi Ruby and I was a member of that club for many years I started out with Toastmasters back in 2008 but um, I continue to be a member because I know how important it is to continue to practice so here it goes <laughs> um, I really liked what Susanna said about uh, not criticizing condemning or complaining and I think um, it's true that we need to do that about other people, but I think it's more important that we do it about ourselves. I think it's something that we need to all take into account every year and maybe at the beginning of the year, it gives us the opportunity to uh, maybe think about it more seriously and to put it into writing that we will not criticize, condemn, or complain about ourselves and how we tend to be harder on ourselves than other people are. I know um, there's a room full of guests there and I know it's hard to, to, to be in this room and I really applaud you for being there because uh, it, it made all the difference for me to be a member of Toastmasters. So um, I applaud you for being there. I think that uh, the main thing is don't criticize, condemn, or complain about yourself this coming year and I think you will be very su uh, successful. Thank you. For the time, let's see. Any of our guests like to try? Emails? Okay, <laughs> okay. Sorry. Thank you. And we're supposed to find some people to get it. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, I really love New Year's resolutions. This year happened to be a very busy and hectic one. My husband and I got married in July, and then we moved houses in September. So the holidays came around and I almost completely forgot to make resolutions. So um, I'm very glad that this is reminding me. <laughs> and I do have one in particular that I'm really excited about. Um, I'm very passionate about diet, well, not diet, but just eating healthy and nutrition. And so I watched a couple documentaries recently about food and they happen to be about veganism. So my New Year's resolution is to eat more plant-based and ideally become vegan. So I tried it for about two weeks and I love pea milk. I don't know if you've seen it in the store, but I love like the non-milk milk option. Oh, milk is great too. Um, and I love, you know, the Beyond Impossible Meat and all of that. But what I cannot get um, into is the vegan cheese. Unfortunately, vegan cheese just does not taste like <laughs> actual cheese. So that's been a fun kind of hurdle. It's just fun to try to eat more plant-based. And my husband is a big meat eater. He is like the you know quintessential like meat potatoes guy. And so it was really sweet. He actually said he would try to eat more plant I'm very impressed and um, was not sure that he would he would be open to that. So that is my Main New Year's resolution on um, many. Okay. Um, 
New Year's resolution is different for everybody, and the whole thing is about making a commitment to yourself to get it done. And we all have like diets or exercise or whatever, change in our careers. It all takes a decision up here and the commitment and the big word. And so I think that when you make a commitment to yourself and you want to get it done, then you have to lay out a game plan and a goal to be able to reach and attain what you're going to do. And so therefore, as a result, you're going to get distractions. And things are going to be spontaneous. And it's mm -hmm. going to take you off gear to where you want to get. However, it rolls back to how bad do you really want it? How bad do you want to make that change? Is it going to make a significant difference in your life? Is it going to be something that will change for the rest of your life? Or are you going to reel right back the next year and go back to where you used to be? Or maybe, maybe do it half the month and, and I'll forget it, you know. Cheese, okay, forget the cheese, right? But you've made a resolution to go ahead and try something else and do something different. And that's, that's basically what I think you know, those resolutions are about, is listing it out, you making a game plan, and just doing it. And understanding your determination has got to be stronger than your distractions. I think the distractions totally deter people constantly. And it's like we always have distractions. It doesn't matter. And however successful you want to be in life, just understand you stay focused and you'll get it done. Thank you. I have the names. Yeah. Okay. It was, first of all, uh, Connor, was everybody with this? Yes. Okay. So, everybody at the bottom of the ballot, there's a chair off that says best table topics. So, we have choice. And Robin was the first speaker. She spoke about health. Susanna talked about three things and about complaints. Gigi talked about some pictures that she wanted, the type of pictures she wanted to take. Mimi followed up on what Susanna talked about. And Maria, Maria else talked about her diet or trying to switch to more plant based. And Barbara kind of wrapped it all up and told us how to be more effective and more positive and get people done. So please vote for any one of those people Robin, Susanna, Gigi, Amy, Mary Alice, or Barbara. And let's see who's the. We'll pass that around. Uh, David is David's the vote counter. And at this point, include my part of the program and we can control the meeting to our touchdowns. Dennis, uh, wonderful job on New Year's resolutions. I love to make them and break them the next week. <laughs> big, big, lit big. Now we'll turn time over to Roy Dressel as the general evaluator for this portion of the meeting. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Good morning, Dave. My name is Eric Dixon. I forgot to announce you, and I apologize, Connor, when I came up here earlier to explain what you do. You're going to evaluate Olga's speech. Yes, yeah. Yeah. give my notes. Yes, sir. Okay, we're going to notes. notes. I should have announced Dave originally. Actually, she's the evaluator. Barbara. Oh, Barbara. Oh, I had it down wrong. No, you well, had it right. We switched. We switched. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. And I was spontaneous. Oh, good deal. All right. Barbara, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start again. Barbara will now do an evaluation of all the speed. So Barbara, you're up. Well, okay, that is definitely life is spontaneous, right? Old oh, Dave did a great job. I don't think that uh, it's an easy thing to do storytelling and capture an audience. And I, I see that you're, you're working on it. 
you have a couple of things that I was reading the what you have to do in order to do storytelling and you have to put in your 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 emotion, your value, your voice has to go up and down and you have to capture your audience. You did a really good job. This is your first storytelling, right? Yeah. And I would like to say that um, your tonation was great. You used body movement. I think that if you're going to give storytelling, maybe put a little bit more exaggeration into your body movement so that you capture because it is a story to capture your audience. The um, raising your voice at certain points, you did pretty good, but I would say move out maybe a little bit more because it's a story. The beginning and the end we're capturing, in the middle is where I think the tonality and everything could have gone a little bit more because I got it, but I was like trying to get it. And that's just because it's your first home, obviously. Family is what was important. And I know you because you're always talking your speeches about your family. This showed. And I know that you wanted it to be where sisters were different but came together. One thing I got out of it, and maybe it's just me because I'm a woman's liver type person, but the parents didn't let, was it Ursula? Didn't let her be who she wanted to be and actually be a career person and that she had to be the daughter that, or you know, they stay at home, cook, clean and all that. Oh, that stuff is so bad today. But in the story, it came out very well. That, I think, the comparisons between the two sisters, and at the end of it all, they came uh, apart and together. That came out really clear. As far as I could visualize what you were working and trying to relate to all of us, it brought out to me of where we are in the past and where we're going in the future, as far as for women and men, I guess, too. You guys have to cook and clean sometimes now. Um, <laughs> but the, but the, Oh, but the bottom line and the whole story of it is, I would say, is the fact that family needs to be together no matter what. And the respect of the parents, they did it because of the respect of the parents. However, I was really happy that the teacher tried hard to be able to get Ursula to go to school, you know, and get that thought through. But all in all, we're all family and uh, it's, it's good to have that in our, in our lives. So great job, Olga. So Robin Barber was on time, I saw, and I think everything else was on time. We vote for the best evaluator. We already know who that is, so there's only one. We'll go right on to uh, Susanna and our all counter grammarian report. Robin Perna. Three ums. Dennis Ham, word of the day. Mimi Ruby, one um. The dress little word of the day. Duran, three ums. You said a grammatically incorrect phrase. There was two. There should be there were two sisters. Uh, Barbara Archuleta, we're the winner of the Jane. Oh. Yeah. You have eight ums. <laughs> <laughs> you said uh, your, 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 you know, okay, as fillers. Uh, but you did say one phrase as well, which was distraction deter. Oh, that was interesting. And you said the word of the day. Mary Alice Nichols, three ums. But I also like the phrase that you said, fun her. Really interesting. And that's it. Oh, and Gigi, you did the work. Good deal. Thank you, Susan. That is a, you gotta be, all of us gotta be a lesson. You can't wander off and you're doing that job. So great job. So my job is done. I will turn it back over to our Toastmaster, Dave Garrett. Yes, you're welcome, Dave. Hey. The ribbons. The ribbons. Oh, yes. Close. By unanimous votes. <laughs> Olga. 
We're going to give you a sticker. <laughs> Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we take a picture. Oh, yeah. And then we put it out there on Facebook and every social media outlet. Thank you. There you go. You're two weeks of fame. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Oh. oh, and for best evaluated by unanimous vote. Oh, there you go again. Barbara. Barbara. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> you won't tell anybody. Well, very good. So I think we are on time. Very good. And uh, I guess uh, do I give it to you? There you go. The Vice President of Education for the role for next week. No, you have to okay, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, you do it. I do, I do want to say, Coastmasters, I've been a member for a little over a year. I joined Coastmasters because I got a bad review. My <laughs> had poor communication skills. I'm like, oh man, this is terrible. Poor communication skills. So yeah, you need to speak up, you need to say things, you need to do things. So I stood on it for four years. <laughs> <laughs> then I signed up for Toastmasters. And the first time I went to Toastmasters, it was strange. People would clap all the time. <laughs> and people would vote. People would do these things. And then there, then there was an odd ah, grammarian. I did not want to hold the chicken. I didn't want to say ah, um, um. I'm going to say ah, 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 um, 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 so I beat you, so I get the chicken. <laughs> but I wanted to be better. And the only way I could be better is by practice, by coming back. This is a safe environment. I want you to feel safe. I want you to feel that this is a place where you can practice, you can try new things. I have a goal this year. Get it, it, Now, I can't take up all the time here, and I'm not going to join four other, five other clubs, but I'm going to speak to Rotary and Kiwanis about things. And I'd like to share that uh, next time. And did I really sign up for being a speaker? No. But, yeah. you, you missed Lions Club. Lions? Yeah. Sir Optimus, Elks. There you go. And Kiwanis. Uh, all those others. I got them all. So Just there's, Lions. There's about 50 in Larry Kim. <laughs> the only thing I did is my practice by speaking up. And this club requires us to stand up here, to be a Toastmaster, to stand up and to be president or to be treasurer or to do something. That's when the total value happens. So I'm going to turn this over to, I'm going to turn it over to Dennis. You can do it. Right, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take care of the assignments for next week. However, before that I do that, I'm going to give a slight warning. Next week. Next week. Next week. I, I, my club that I know is long yeah. as it's so I'm in that mode. I'm going to give an advance warning to all of our guests. Please I'm going to ask be prepared. I'm going to ask each one of you just a little bit about how you thought about our meeting. So just want to give you a heads up that I'm going to do that. So you should be thinking about that part what else what they want to do for our next meeting. Actually, our next meeting is somewhat designed for us already. There is a speech contest coming up in a few weeks. It's going to be on a Tuesday night at the Summer Queen Valley College on Tuesday evening. And there are two different categories for the speech contest. One of them is a speech, and the other one they call the international or inspirational speech. They're both five or seven, I think they're both five or seven, but in length. These humorous or inspirational, and that's the topic for our next week's, our next meeting. So I would like to see if anybody has already taken either category, or what we may do is maybe have an extended table topics, which is going to be like five or seven minutes long, just so we have people 
thinking and speaking in those two arenas. Were they there? Like, yes. Probably oh, that inspiration. Okay. Anything else you think they want to do with either one? People? I'll be humorous. Okay. Everybody will laugh at my bad jokes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Else, thinking we want to do something either one right now. Otherwise, I think that will be our kind of our table topics for the next meeting. Is to just have people thinking in either category, and that will be pretty much our speech our, our meeting for next. All right. What I'll do is I'll put this out on our, our website and have people speak to website. And the date will be the sixth. Sixth, but right. our next meeting because the contest is actually on the eighteenth. And our next meeting after the sixth is on the twentieth. So, yeah. so our next meeting is February. February is sixth. Yeah. We meet on the first and third Thursday of every month. Normally, during the holidays, we didn't do that, but normally it's the first and third. We could. What else would we maybe do more of a Robin? Robin type. It's going to be really flexible. Just trying to get people to think. Those two categories for that meeting. Okay. All right. That being said, now it's time for our guest to or guest comments. We just mainly want to get an idea of how you put that. All right, I'll put that up. I just want to get some feedback to see how well we did, what you thought about our meeting, and if you have any interest in joining, we can take care of that too. So I'm going to go ahead and start on my left. To the right, and I see Mary Alice who's first. Mary Alice, yep. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was great. Thank you so much for having me. I used to attend these, but it's been so long that I. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, and I would love to join. So, maybe that note. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you, Mary Alice. Yes. Yeah. My name is Bernice, and I've thought about joining for a while. And I think I'm going to make that decision. And it was a lot of fun and it's real basic. So we're all in case somebody makes fun of you, but we get up. I think I'd like that. Except they laughed when they got the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I do it next time. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think it's uh, it's pretty cool that everyone gets a chance to express themselves and come up with ideas. And um, I like the feedback that everyone gets. And uh, yeah, I've been on the fence of joining joining a uh, club, so I'm thinking of. Okay, great. We'll cross the aisle. So go. Yeah, I think it's a very positive environment. And I've known about Toastmasters also for several years. Uh, just never had an opportunity to sign up, or actually, I never had an opportunity to go to a meeting until recently. And uh, I think I'm going to try to sign up here. Yeah. Yeah. Next. It seems like a very Thank you, Barbara. Encouraging <laughs> environment. Uh, maybe it's this opportunity to go up if they want to give a speech and uh, they're not not pressured as well then uh, I think I might consider I might consider joining if I if I don't have uh, work obligations or don't go time in the evenings. Okay, it was it was good. We also have a club Tuesday nights that meet in Vicelia. Can't make it watch. For me, it was good. I really, what I really didn't know what was I was gonna expect. Uh, we just said yes. I he just yeah. told me that. Like, hey, you wanna yeah. come? So, okay, let's go. <laughs> uh, but I will be probably not thinking about my ups because I'm an up person. So I just in general. So, but uh, it was it was good. Like if you would tell me to go in the front to and speak, I probably would say no. I was like, I don't know because. I even forget the English language, even the Spanish too. Like I get so nervous, I get blank. And if, if you guys tell me like I will do, it, I'll be doing speeches if I if I stay. 
if you guys t look at me, I'm forgetting. <laughs> okay. um, it helps with that. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Like I'll yeah, I'll, I'll join you. I'll be doing what you guys do in front. Of, just talk. And you get a what do you call it, a coach or a mentor to help you? Yeah. yeah. So that you can that's that's nice. you can also bring up when I joined, I didn't join the first or second meeting. I actually I attended three months just coming, getting a feel mm -hmm. before I actually joined. So we can we can do that too. It just when you join. There's there's exercises, there's workbooks, there's educational materials you get with your with your enrollment with your membership that will help you accelerate your learning and your speaking ability. You don't do that as you just participate, but it does help just being. And as you as you go um, through your well, you guys will be going through the computer system. I started and it was still the manual and I'm a manual person, so I don't know how it's gonna work. When, but when I started, I was the same as like you. I mean, nothing. Mm -hmm. I just, I sat in the back and I would see everybody. And and now, I mean, I I feel like it's it's not a big deal. I'm not nervous anymore. Mm -hmm. I am seen uh, in November, for a crowd of 400 people. Mm -hmm. And it was, I never thought I would be able to do that. So it helps you because we all start where you're gonna start and we understand. And if you don't feel comfortable going up there, we won't push you. But there will come a time where we will push you because yeah. then you won't learn. If we don't give you a little boost, hey, start doing this or, you know, mm -hmm. because that's our ultimate goal is for all of us to be able to go up there and just be natural, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, is, it is amazing. I never thought this was possible. Thanks to Mimi, she got into Toastmasters and I just, I love it, I love it. Okay. Yeah. The other thing that we do offer here, once you join, if you look at the very top of the agenda, it talks about Zoom. You can do like Mimi. Mimi's up in Oregon. She's <laughs> <laughs> but we set this up you can still attend our meetings and so if any of you you join and for some reason you're busy you're not busy enough, you're busy to the point where you can't get here physically but if you still have the time to dedicate for this one hour time period you could log into zoom and be a part of our meeting remotely Robin meeting while driving back yeah. you from from somewhere. Dave, no, yeah, Dave did too, so yeah. it can be done. Yeah. And Mimi did table topics today, so you can yeah. see how it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there are any other questions or comments before I conclude the meeting. Okay, well, thank everybody for coming. And if you're interested in joining right away, we can get you the paperwork. If not, come back in a couple of weeks. And as I said, next meeting will be and that we'll be giving pretty much all speeches. Um, but we will still have some feedback, but it'd be a slightly different format. Please do come back. Right. Thank you. Everybody starts out. You know, I've seen people, one, one lady, she gave us 56 cars, you know, when she started out. So everybody starts out and like, you know, freaking out, especially. Some people would rather visit your facility and speak, you know, you know what I mean? They'd rather die and talk in front of the crowd. You know? And once you, once you get up there, you start just a little bit at a time. You know? Maybe you go up there and do what I did, or you go up there and get word of the day. And now you've done that, and you find it's not too bad. And then you do it again, and there's a point where you go, oh, this is like fun now. So, yeah, it's just a I can remember being in I was high school I think, or no college and, and just speaking in a group of people sitting in a circle. I just get off my like, you know, and then I took a speech class and it was freaky and by the last speech, man, this is fun. You know, I could be a politician. Oh, except for the actual work in it. You know. Yeah. Once you get up there and you start doing it, yeah.
And if you're talking about something you understand, you might give a speech on we need